right, so here's the Impala still sitting here. Um, kind of a forgotten project as I was traveling for work uh, and harvest season started. See the combine sitting in here, but uh, basically here it is. Um, had a little bit of video issues with uh, some of the other work I did, so I'll miss out on that, but <clears throat> that's how it goes. But basically this is the, <coughs> excuse me, this is the 327. Uh, it had that bad camshaft, so it had a wipe lobe on it. Um, so I went ahead and bought a new camshaft, put the new camshaft and lifters in, just as is. And maybe it'll run, I hope so. Maybe it'll be bad, maybe it won't, let's see. Went ahead and put new intake on, so um, basically all new seals on the engine, new camshaft, new intake. Uh, got the engine dropped in here, the old, pit, the old 350 pulled out, so hopefully we'll get this uh, all hooked up and ready to go. You can see, transmit maybe you can, transmission sitting on the ground back down there, so it has nothing hooked up to it so far, it is just the engine sitting in there on the engine mounts so that's as far as it's gotten um, so oh while I was had the engine out uh, I added a power steering pump uh, and steering gearbox that I found in the trunk of the car uh, it's actually so the power steering gearbox right here is a four bolt um, mounting and the car frame is set up for three bolts I figured three out of four is pretty darn good, so that's what I went with. Um, so we'll see if that works, but if it does, I'm gonna have power steering in here too, so that'd be pretty cool. Um, but basically, the the car is ready to run. Um, if I get this all, just have to hook everything up, uh, put all the obviously have the radiator go back in and the carburetor, the fuel system needs a distributor, plug wires, all that stuff hooked up. I don't have any of the gauges hooked up. Uh, switching it over to electronic gauges instead of the uh, uh, mechanical style for oil pressure and temperature. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. But once I get that done, we'll be we'll be all set, uh, ready to go, and see if we can get it running. So hopefully we can get that done sometime soon and get this on the road before before winter really hits and we get all the salt on the road. But if we do. Uh, conveniently the car is parked at a, on a gravel road so there's no salt on that so if I need to get it out and test it out I can so it'll probably happen a couple times just keep it keep it loose but um, no, no serious highway driving at least um, I don't know maybe if I get too so crazy uh, I might even hook up the heater box and see if there's that's leaking or not or if somebody just capped that off just to for performance or something like that um, or just to keep the heat out in the summer but when it's cold it's nice to have so maybe that'll work maybe it won't but um, I'm excited to get ahead with this uh, if I do get it up and running I uh, see these old exhaust manifolds are sitting on here uh, I do have a set of long tube headers I'm gonna put on with a full exhaust system there's a guy in the neighboring town over in uh, Fort Dodge He's got a shop there and he does pretty good custom work so I took my old pickup there and so I'll take the car here um, over to him too. Um, if you do good business you get repeat work so it's just kind of how it goes. But So I'm going to go back to him, um, let him do that. What I am guessing on those from what I've read online, uh, you see the clearancing from the power steering gearbox and the manifold here. I'm gonna have an issue on the header. I believe they said like maybe cylinder three and five, uh, more than likely just five. So we'll see how that goes. Um, hopefully it's not gonna be an issue. Um, if it is, if you've seen the episode of Engine Masters where they just start banging on the headers, they actually end up making a little bit of horsepower first before they start dropping off one or two horsepower and it's crazy how much you can beat on a header and actually not lose any power so i'm just going to go ahead and do that i don't have to worry about losing power or anything so just make sure it fits and then go from there okay so what i'm doing now is i'm underneath the car here working on the uh clutch and pressure plate here uh so what i was having was an issue um basically these are my clutch or pressure plate bolts as you see there the head here 
is quite long. Uh, these were the ARP bolts. Um, anyways, I think this flywheel has been ground down quite a bit. And so when I went to put these on, the, the hole for the uh, bolts here isn't uh, drilled through enough before the thread starts. So this shoulder hits on the threads before it's tightened. Uh, so that's the issue here. So basically I just bought some grade eight bolts and that's what I'm gonna use. Uh, after doing some reading online, basically most people say that's okay or that's what they do anyways. I'm just gonna do it. Um, the bolts that I bought, um, they are the, they don't have a shoulder on them so the threads go the entire distance. I was looking for a really short shoulder couldn't find it, um, so I just went with the full thread. It should work just fine. Um, but yeah, just replacing those bolts. I had the pressure plate tightened down pretty much all the way, and now I'm just taking it um, one bolt at a time, uh, taking it out and replacing it with these grade eight bolts, and that way it's uh, gonna stay true and everything. You can see I still got the alignment tool sitting in there, so once I get that done, I'll tighten it up to 35 foot-pounds, and then I'll be able to mount my transmission back onto the engine. So I've been working on this for just a little bit now. Um, had a little bit of time actually. We've got to get going pretty soon here, but this is what I made today. Uh, see the transmission is now mounted to the engine there. We've got the, everything's in, the transmission installed. Oh, that's good light quality, but the drive shaft's in also. Uh, I don't have the clutch. Uh, lever the z-arm mounted quite right yet need to put that on but besides that the drive line is basically installed now i just need some uh engine work uh, i guess just to get all the accessories mounted and uh get the gauges on get the carburetor the fuel system done and exhaust uh, manifold to put on at least and then uh we'll be ready for uh to try starting it up and breaking in the camshaft okay so I'm making progress today. Uh, as you can see, when you sit down in the uh, Impala here, the you got a nice set of gauges going on. So I got the temperature, oil, pressure, the voltage, the vacuum reading, and the uh, AFR ratio on the far right there. Uh, they're all hooked up actually already, except for the AFR gauge. That one uh, I need to uh, weld in a bung on the exhaust. Still got a tachometer right here sitting on the dash. Um, I'm gonna install that yet. Conveniently, I have this hose clamp that came on the steering wheel, so I guess that's where the tack's going to go because it comes with an amount for that. So that's just how it's going to be. Um, clutch is hooked up, brakes are hooked up, the transmission's in, the engine's in, so getting somewhere. Uh, carburetor is mounted on there. I don't have the fuel plumbed to it. I don't have the, the throttle linkage put on, but uh, I do got the all the spark plugs finally put in the accessories aren't exactly the i don't know the front pulley here just was switching the engine uh the front pulley working with the geometry of the fan belts and this different water pump it's just not quite working so i need to come up with a different pulley or change the water pump neither of which i really want to do but that's what's going to take so um yeah it's making progress just uh add oil, add an ignition system, fuel system, and then a uh, cooling system, and should be about ready to go. Not too much, I guess. So I'm doing the, adding the oil, I guess. Uh, one thing you wanna do if you're breaking in a camshaft is you make, wanna make sure that you have your engine oil braking additive if you're just gonna use some regular oil. I just have some conventional 1030 oil that I'm gonna be using, so I got the comp cams braking additive. It adds, uh, this ZDDP, which I guess used to be zinc in oil. Um, it says zinc, it's not actually zinc anymore, but um, otherwise uh, racing fuel, or it's not racing fuel, racing oil uh, will work. You don't have to add any additives that way if you just use racing oil for the brake end. So you just need to do something when you break in your camshaft so that um, you don't wipe the cam load right away. So that's what I'm doing. Okay, so ready for the first fire up with the new camshaft here. Um, got everything hooked up, got the cooling system put in place and 
everything's kind of been checked over, uh, primed the oil system, got the distributor back on, set that at close to around 8 degrees of advance. Uh, we'll see how that turns out. Got the timing light here, so as soon as we fire it up, it'll be ready to go. But double checked, and we have the, with the electric fuel pump, so we have the water, the water, the gas up in the carburetor here. And so then you can see when you pump it, it's got fuel going in there, so everything should be working there. Um, I think we're about ready to go, so we're going to fire it up, try it for the first time here. Okay, so I got the car running. Um, everything fired up. Uh, it was a little bit difficult on the startup. I had to actually retard the timing a little bit. It was backfiring up through the carburetor, but um, retarded the timing a little bit. Um, kind of set it. Had the timing light going as we were turning it over, so I was kind of way too far advanced. So brought that back to around uh, 8 degrees before top dead center um, based on, yeah, just for the for the initial timing, I guess. Um, but once we got that set, then the uh, car started right up, uh, tuned the carburetor up real quick. Um, just tried to get the most vacuum that we could. Uh, showing about 15 um, inches of vacuum. Um, that's pretty good. I'll, that's fine with me. It's not really smoking, it's running real, real smooth. Um, can't complain there. The only issue I had was um, I have a little bit of a coolant leak right here at the water neck. Um, that's kind of my own fault because I put the sealant on there and filled it right up and fired it up. So I'm going to just reseal that real quick and then let it sit overnight, fill the radiator back up and it should be good to go. But uh, besides that, everything's running good. Um, hopefully I'll be able to find myself a belt for my power steering and kind of just move out with the project and keep her going and hopefully get around the road this summer quite a bit.